Louisiana beer reviews and this is a Louisiana beer. It's from Parleu Beer Labs in New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah, this is a what more more commonly known as, as a macro and they do their own thing. They you mean make a micro. Up. You said macro. My, oh, I said macro. I'm sorry. Micro. Uh, oh, a nano brewery. Yeah, nano. Where they do, where they do their own things. The place is real small. Uh, they're always, they always have about eight different beers on tap. And they seem to do like to do seasonable stuff. They'll take like fresh ingredients in fruit and whatnot, and then uh, incorporate it into their beers. The last one we had, we did was that was the one that had that bread. See, it was like a farmhouse farmhouse ale, and it tasted just like one. So you have to like that style to like that beer, and if you don't, well, you can appreciate the style, give it a grade based off the style. But I also think that. Great these beers, you have to like what it is you're trying. So this is a West Coast style IPA. Uh, it's got a, it's it's got a uh, some sort of a flower on it. Kind of makes it look like some kind of red, pink, and black camo. The website said they use they dry hop it with two different hops. I can't remember the name. Dry hop. We better get on this then. If it's dry hop, that and, stuff fades. And they said it's a, one is cryo cryo hops, and then they use about 30 thirty percent yeast. Uh, Thirty percent rice. Thirty percent rice. Oh. And check yeast. Sorry. Mm. I wonder if it's going to have any kind of like a sake taste to it. Sake taste. Let me get a little towel for this little splashiness. Some of it. Some of it. When they do the hand well, filling, I, I notice it went all over me and it's evaporated. I notice when they do the hand fills. Sometimes they overfill them. You know, because they're just kind of eyeballing it. What does that have to do with anything? Oh, you mean with the can? Probably. Yeah, I, I did notice that it has a gold top on a silver can. So that, that just means they're getting whatever they're getting and put yeah, it together. Yeah, I, I have to think I'm not, I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, I'm not harping on all that. I know you like to do that. You like to talk about the, the, the stick on label. No, and, I know, but I think they do a hand fill canning. Okay, can. come on. What are you doing? I guess, you, again, you had to talk over me. Yeah, okay. That's okay. I see how these reviews go, and I'll start doing that too. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> viewers, I'll read your comments. Okay, um, viewers, <laughs> look at that. It's kind of a light yellow, slight haze, almost like a, again, like a light going through fog. And some little chunks going up. Look like little yeast chunks. It's got a pleasant smell to it. It's real clean. Less of an IPA. But you still get that. Kind of a West Coast style. You want a little more? I don't have any room, I don't think. Um, I was talking about, you know, the uh, you were saying a harp on the, uh, the adhesive labels. I saw some macro beers recently that had the adhesive paper label. I was like, what? I don't, it, I don't know why that bothers you. It doesn't bother me, I just notice it. It just seems strange on a big production beer, you know, from a factory. That it's, smells... It's probably cost. Who cares? I care, obviously. It doesn't have that pungent-y uh, hopness coming through in the nose. It does smell clean. Has some little pungent hop notes, yes. Rice, okay. Rice, all right. Oh, Budweiser IPA. There we go. Mm. Very hoppy. Very hoppy. Lemony, citrusy, and just straight up bitter hops. I was about to say yes. It tastes like a real, real well-made IPA. Tangy. Tangy. It's light body. It must be that rice coming through with it. Rice is one of the grains. I noticed that those beers are kind of light and refreshing. This I consider this one light and refreshing. Just heavy on the alcohol. It's 6.8. And 7.3. Mmm. You're right. The last one we did was 6.8. With, with the... Uh, Pelican in the, in the biplane. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Um, 
it's medium bodied it's got kind of that boiled rice flavor like I was eating boiled rice today for lunch and um, it's got kind of that flavor you know people have said to me rice doesn't have a flavor I said what you joking right I know what rice tastes rice like. Rice does have a flavor. Yeah. You, you just, it's neutral. If you buy really oriented. good rice, really good rice, you should get the, the, the flavor of, of, of a nuttiness, almost like a corn. Mm. Now, I had a great value long grain. You're not really referring to that particular brand? No. I'm referring to imported basmati rice, okay. which we used to get locally here, and they would call it the corn rice. I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother would cook it, and I'm walk around the house just telling me, you know, uh, uh, are you roasting pecans? It smells like pecans it is. Oh, that's the rice. The rice smells like that. Now they take those rice fields and they grow crawfish in them. Yeah. But I do think that the great value long grain was good. It is good. I've been enjoying it. Okay. Um, of course, price was right. Yeah, actually, someone gave me the bag. The price was really right. Um, yeah. Uh, sweet, yeah, a little sweet, about three out of five sugar cubes. Oh, no, it's, it's not that sweet. I think it's pretty sweet. Maybe it's the tanginess. You a sweet tooth. Yeah, but it, maybe it's the tanginess. There's a tanginess it. going on to it, uh, going on with it. It's more of a, um, it's like four out of five bitterness units. It's got I a lot of bitterness. I think it has more sweetness. It's this, medium this body. Is slight, this, this is a slight chalkiness. Very, very slight. Uh-oh. Um. And that could be coming from the rice. Sometimes rice will do that. If you ever made rice powder out of pulverized rice, it does have that kind of a chalkiness to it. It's kind of funny because, uh, you know, the most famous beer in the world that uses rice is Budweiser, right? And um, people were saying, try all these different sake. So I was trying a lot of sakes. Mm -hmm. And they tasted a lot, a lot like Budweiser. Yeah, minus the, the beechwood age. Yeah, no beach So they would probably Asian. taste some more like butt ice. They had a Budweiser flavor, and but they're like 15% alcohol. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't you can't drink too much sake. You get loaded and sick probably. Okay, this one has a clean, dry finish. Um, I like it. It's not amazing, but I like it. Um, mm, give I it like it. I like it. I'm gonna give it a very favorable score, and I say. And I would recommend anyone, if you're in New Orleans, you find yourself in the uh, By Water slash Ninth Ward area. Look, yeah. look this uh, little nano brewery up. They got some amazing beers out there. Yeah, By Water's right. Well, By Water's part of the Ninth Ward. And uh, if you just look, follow along the Mississippi River levee, you'll see it. I mean, it's, just 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 use your app you got on your phone. Yeah. You'll find oh, it. Oh, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Or hug the river. Or hug the river. You'll be out there. Right next to that barbecue place. Because you can't go, you can't get lost because once you go to Poland Avenue, you can't go any further because there's a canal. So you would have to turn, turn left. Around. See, it's at the river. You have to turn left and go north, and then you'd see it. It'd be right there, right across the street from the joint. Yeah, and right behind, I think there's a wine shop, liquor store called Bacchanal, which serves food now. Mm -hmm. And just listen for the train because it's by a railroad track. <laughs> okay. Get yeah, fun. 94. Because it's unique when it's rice based, I'm gonna give this a 96. I like it a lot. I like the flavor of it. I think I think they did a really good job with this. It's clean. It's pleasant. It's not offensive in any kind of a way. It comes through as, as a West Coast style, like it says. So I, I think it's got everything going with it. The only downside it is that it is a little thin in the uh, the mouthfeel. I wish it was a little bit more heavier. Thin? You mean in the body? Yeah, in the body. I'm sorry. I used to say mouthfeel and body interchangeably, but somebody told me, you know, mouthfeel is like how it feels in your mouth, like if it's slick or fluffy and all, and the body is the heaviness or lightness. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. Correct it. You got me. No, you know what I mean. You, you helped me. He was actually criticizing me, but I appreciate it because it helped me. I'd say it's still a little thin on the mouthfeel and, and in the body a little bit, but... Okay, so... Um, so 96, 94, 96... That's a 95. That's an A. That's an A beer coming out of New Orleans at Perlo Labs. 
And what's the price? About four ninety nine a can. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it was. Either four ninety nine or three ninety nine a can. Yeah, they have prices on. If you look on their website, which I was just looking at before I did, we did the video. I think it was three ninety nine a can because I got this at Helios' wine warehouse. You can go to the beer lab, and they'll do pours for you. Yeah, like in a growler or something. Yeah, you. you I, I guess you could bring like your own like little beer. Like I got that little beer thing from Abita, and uh, I guess they'll fill it for a maybe. certain amount of money. Me probably, I guess. Okay, so I know that was a thing back in the day with the. Uh, like some of the liquor stores, they were picking up kegs and they were selling them. They called them growlers or crawlers. No, crawlers are the cans. They call growlers them growlers. Or crawlers. Or yeah. yeah, it's usually like a half a gallon of beer. Okay, and so we're going to say laissez les bon temps relais, and y'all go to New Orleans and go to, I'm not going to say take a brewery tour because there would be no tour. It's just a little place to hang out. Is it? It is kind of like a tour, but it's not much to look at. Uh, it's about the size of someone's house, the whole place, and then they got a little courtyard in the back you can hang out. And sometimes they got food, pop-ups and stuff, so it's a place to go hang out and bring some friends, talk to them. Kind of a hippie place, but enjoy. This one's good. Thanks, Peter Luke.